So going along, so this is all pre-Marine Corps, kind of growing up, coming in, you know, you didn't really like school that much. You know, you played uh, senior day, ditch day, almost every day, even when you weren't a senior. No. Somehow I didn't get in trouble for that. No, I was kidding. Um, and then, you know, we talked about kind of like the, early, the the later you did two years in high school as opposed to four because you wanted to join the service. So is there any, any particular reason why you wanted to join the service, let alone join early at 17? To be brutally honest, so I could get as far away from my hometown as possible because if you look at my hometown, like not many people succeed. So when I was 17, I was I was still working. I was working three jobs because I, I didn't have school and all my friends were in school. So I was working at Uts, which makes the potato chips. I was working at McDonald's and I was working at Subway. So us, I was working three days a week from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. And then I would get off, sleep for a few hours and go to McDonald's for like eight hours a day and then sleep for the rest and then rotate the days that I wasn't working at us with McDonald's and uh, Subway. What, what else was there to do? But uh, a lot of people in my hometown either got stuck in the factories because there's a lot of factories or they ended up using drugs or getting addicted to other things. And that that's not how I wanted my life to turn out. Uh, so I obviously didn't go to college right off the bat because one, I could not afford it. Um, two, I just wasn't in the mindset that I wanted to go sit in a class, waste time, spend more money on college than it would be to buy a house. <laughs> right, no, I, I hear you on that. So I definitely just enlisted. I really wanted to enlist because I had a higher belief in being part of something that was bigger than just myself and wanting to um, make myself better, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Because I felt like I was kind of in the same boat with that. You know, prior to, I had like two or three cars that were very unreliable. I was working, I remember my senior year, I was working, I think it was my senior year. I was working four jobs. I was uh, going to school and I was playing two sports. And trying to balance that with an unreliable vehicle, it was just terrible. Like I was exhausted every day. Sometimes I would, well, here's my little story. So I would show up to English class and like sometimes I just go straight in there and put my head on the desk. Just like walk in, the bell rung, cool. All right, there goes Chris with his head on his desk. I just, I couldn't help it. I, was, I wasn't getting any sleep. I was working like almost every hour that I wasn't at school. And uh, it was definitely rough. Um, and if I had some better saving habits, I probably could have, you know, saved myself from a lot of that actual, you know, hours of work and just spending my money on, on dumb stuff. So how did education play a part as you, you know, throughout your, you know, your military career? Well, well looking at it, even from the jump start, they make you do education. So if you look at your joint service transcript, you you even get credits just for going to boot camp. You get exactly nine credits for going to boot camp. Plus, you get a few uh, first aid ones that uh, fall in there and give you college credits as well. But um, going in, I I was very naive. I did, I felt I wouldn't have to do college. Um, and then the reality set in because I really wanted to do 20 years. However, I know that a lot of people end up getting out. I think it's like two or three percent of people that want to do 20 years actually succeed at that. Uh, so I knew, oh, wow. I needed, yeah, uh, I knew I actually needed a backup plan. So I like to plan. I like to have backup plans A, B, C, and D. You can't just have two. You need more than two because things fall through. Um, so I, I got pregnant with my, my son. Um, and at that point I was like, I can't tell him that he can't do it. So that's when I started school I was pregnant and then I had him and I continued school. But then I started talking to every single Marine I had because at the time that I started school, I was only a Lance Corporal. Okay. (laughs) Actually, no, I'm sorry. I was still a PFC. So I obviously did not qualify for TA yet because I wasn't even in a year. Right. It's it's, it's uh, <laughs> two years, right? Yeah. It is two years. However, that being said, FAFSA paid for all of it. I didn't have to pay, I didn't have to pay a penny out of pocket. 
uh, before I qualified for TA, I used FAFSA that got me through. And then as soon as I qualified for TA, I used TA and FAFSA. And I actually got paid for going to school. They gave me six grand each year and that went straight in my pocket because TA paid for the rest. <laughs> so, so for those that don't know what FAFSA and TA is, can you kind of break that down and like a, a little bit so that people can kind of understand? TA is uh, tuition assistance that's offered throughout the, the service branches at your two-year mark. Keep in mind that your commands do have to sign off on it, so hopefully you have a good command that believes you'll make it because I've seen some of them get denied. Um, at that time, you have to take it up with your command, and normally it'll go through it as long as like you haven't been canceled, uh, counseled negatively, NJP, and so on. Um, but then FAFSA is the Federal Student Aid Program, which they go off, if you're a service member, they go off of your income and trust me, you'll make it because I think as a PNC, I made like less than 20 grand a year. And then as a Lance Corporal, I think I made 20, no, not even 25, because as a Sergeant, I made 25 grand a year. Um, so uh, you, you will qualify for the entire thing as long as you're taking a full Full schedule which that's dependent off of your college and all that you'll have to do for that's put in for a good year and it'll tell you uh, how much you qualify how much you're expected to pay um, however when using FAFSA and TA if you go look for scholarships there's an outrageous amount of scholarships out there uh, there's one for pogo pogoing like the stick that you jump on if you video yourself and submit it you can get a scholarship wow uh, writing left-handed there's a scholarship doing cartwheels um there is an outrageous amount of scholarships that just don't get claimed each year because no one looks for them uh, I, so, I have, go ahead real quick so what i'll do because there's there's probably a, a lot of them that a lot of us don't know about, including myself. What I'll do is I'll get with Shannon on the side and I will include links to the uh, the full interview video that I put out. And if I if I get it in time, I'll put it out throughout the snippets that I have throughout the week. But at minimum, I'll put all the links for like the scholarships and I'll have a pretty detailed uh, detail section for the uh, the full YouTube video that comes out for you guys that want to check that out.